We have an NHL trade to discuss. All you lovey's time in Vancouver has come to an end. He's off and on his way to Florida. What is the return and what does this mean for both clubs? We'll discuss that coming up next. So welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. As I mentioned, we have an NHL trade to discuss. Now, as we reported on late last night, uh, there was a feeling within Vancouver media based on the sources and information they were given that all of you Levy's time in Vancouver was coming to an end, that he was likely going to be traded sometime today. If not, if they could not find a deal, that he was likely going to be put on waivers, and many felt if he was, that somebody would likely claim him since they don't have to give up any assets to be able to do that. The 2015 the 2016 former first round pick had struggled in training camp, didn't look great, and after many years of being in the organization, uh, many felt it was just time to give him a fresh start, time to move on, uh, and he kind of became, you know, probably looking at that 8 9 spot on the, the defensive depth chart with the Canucks. So uh, at this point, he's been traded to the Florida Panthers, and they do get a couple of decent depth pieces in my uh, in return here in my opinion are pretty decent i mean i know based on the art the article in the athletic last night from thomas Durant and rick dollarball that we were talking about referencing the potential trade that was coming they felt that the trade value was pretty low from what they'd heard around the nhl which was reasonably accurate but to get a couple of pieces that could be coming in handy later on is actually a decent job here by Vancouver. So they get uh, Noel Juleson, a defenseman who's a right shot defenseman, former first round pick himself, uh, one year older than you Levy, uh, was in the Montreal organization. Uh, really has had a lot of bad luck with injuries, but uh, somebody who's also, because of that, kind of stalled in their development. And like you Levy, never really really lived up to expectations uh he was originally a montreal canadians draft pick was in the habs organization up until last season when he was claimed on waivers by the florida panthers so uh like i said he's you know entering his mid-20s uh, gives him a little bit more on the right side i know between the, the left and right side in vancouver uh the right side is kind of viewed as being a little bit more thin so it gives him an extra depth piece there. He's already been through waivers, so he can report rate to Abbotsford in the American Hockey League and will not need additional waivers, so there's no risk in losing him. And they also get 25-year-old forward Yuho Lemiko, who's a pending restricted free agent, currently only making $750,000 at the NHL level. Now, he is on an NHL contract right now. He's uh, not you know, able to go right to the minors. If they want to uh, assign him to Abbotsford, he will need to go on waiver so we'll see what their plans are for him if they want to keep him within the roster or demote him i guess at this point they may not be uh, too concerned about losing him on waivers i'm not really sure like i said overall what their plans are but at this point they get a couple of depth pieces back they get you a fresh start and we kind of go from there of course vancouver also has travis hammonick on waivers today there will be another video coming here uh, in the next couple of hours talking about the rest of the news of the day uh, but there is a ton and i remain like a ton of players on waivers uh with travis hammonick likely being one of the headliners in that group uh so clearly as we know they signed him to a two-year contract uh, he did not get vaccinated, seemed to be against doing that. So that creates issues for how much he's going to be able to play for them. Um, obviously, with all the restrictions in place, the COVID protocols and the various uh, locations, uh, he would miss a ton of action playing for a Canadian club. I know there was talk that uh, he was looking at maybe not uh, playing this year, but he did not opt out. Uh, so obviously, he's not done that which is obviously gets him paid because if you opt out uh kind of put your contract on hold you're not going to get paid for that so i guess he's kind of exercising his rights here going through what's probably recommended from his agent and we'll see what happens he either gets claimed they can assign him i'm not sure if they're going to be able to suspend him i don't know where that situation is going certainly is complicated but it does kind of deplete the right side of their blue line so we'll have to keep an eye on that situation here as well it is not completely said and done but tomorrow at five o'clock eastern time is when nhl teams need to have their final uh, roster set be cap compliant and everything to start the nhl season which is why we saw so many players be placed on waivers here today uh, obviously a lot of these players will be assigned to their uh, ahl affiliates and be you know cut from training camp etc if they do indeed clear but it wouldn't be shocking with the names that are out there that we could see some more activity uh, but I'm not sure what that means exactly yet for Vancouver. We'll have to wait 
and see. So stay tuned for another video coming soon. But the Ulevi experiment with the Vancouver Canucks is over. Unfortunately, this number five overall first round pick from five years ago has not worked out. Um, and, you know, it's just one of those scenarios that you, you could look back and have a do over here. You could have grabbed Matthew Kachuk. You could have grabbed Charlie McAvoy. Uh, you could have grabbed several other players. Like I know Clayton Keller went a couple spots down. And there's many other guys in that draft, too, that uh, went later into the first round that obviously became much stronger players and have had productive NHL careers so far. But, you know, not to rag on the Canucks too much because there are many NHL first round picks, uh, relatively high ones at that, that don't always work out. But it's an unfortunate set of circumstances. This does hurt Vancouver. Obviously, they would have much preferred that he became a regular player for him and lived up to the expectations, but it's not worked out. In Florida, I would imagine he's likely going to be their number seven guy looking at their depth chart right now. They have six NHL defensemen on the roster, but they do have the space to be able to keep him as a number seven guy based on where they're at with their cap. So I would suspect they'll keep him for the time being, see how things go. He could even end up on waivers uh, a little bit later on into the year if they're not necessarily pleased with how he's playing for them and they might want to send him down to their AHL affiliate. So we'll have to see how everything works out from there. But let me know your thoughts on this trade down below and stay tuned for another video coming in a couple of hours. If you're new to this channel, make sure you subscribe and stick around. We'll keep you up to date with all the latest news, rumors, and analysis on all 32 NHL teams. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Bye.